A tank initially holds 40 gallons of pure water. Brine that contains two pounds of salt per gallon enters the tank at the rate of one and a half gallons per minute. The well-stirred mixture leaves at the rate of two gallons per minute. Find the amount of salt in the tank at time t. So this process starts off with us setting up the differential equation. So the function y is going to measure the amount of salt in the tank. The unit um, for that is going to be pounds. And uh, at any time t, so the unit for t will be minutes. And so we're in search of y. What we want to get a handle on is the derivative, though, dy dt, how y changes with time. So it's the change in the amount of salt in the tank with respect to time. If y is in pounds and t is in minutes, then dy dt will be in pounds per minute. And ultimately, we have to set up the following template, basically. We have the how the amount, uh, the amount of salt is changing is equal to the rate at which it's coming in minus the rate at which it's going out. Each of those require a product, and we multiply how fast it's being poured times the concentration. Uh, it's coming in at one and a half gallons every minute. It's going out at two gallons every minute. So the pour rate in is one and a half. The pour rate out is two. But the harder part is trying to figure out what the concentration is. I have it blank right here. We have to fill in the blanks here. Uh, let's go to the next slide to do that. So what are the units of concentration? It's going to be in pounds of salt per gallon of, of uh, brine, salt water. Pounds per gallon. So we have uh, the concentration coming in. It was actually straight given to us in the problem. They told us that there were two pounds per gallon of what, uh, for what was coming in. If you go back to the wording of the problem, they said brine that contains two pounds of salt per gallon enters the tank. So that was given. Now it's much more difficult to figure out the concentration on the way out. So the unit still is going to be pounds per gallon, and the numerator is going to be y, our function. Because now we're talking about what's in the tank available to come out of the tank. There are y pounds of salt in the tank. But the, the real question is in how many gallons of salt water are in the tank? And the issue with this problem is that it changes over time. The amount of salt water starts off at 40 gallons, but we have one and a half gallon comes in while two and a half gallons go out. So we'll be losing a half gallon every minute. We start with 40 gallons, but we lose a half gallon every minute. So then the formula then will be 40 minus 1 half t. t is going to be the number of minutes. So after 2 minutes, you're down to 39. After 4 minutes, you're down to 38. This is a linear function that will tell us how many gallons of salt water there are in the tank at any time t. Now remember, the units for concentration are pounds per gallon, we have y for pounds, and 40 minus half t for gallons. This will be the concentration going out. Okay, we plug this in to our template, and this will give us our differential equation. Let's just cancel units and let's simplify it. So the gallons will cancel. And we have the right unit, pounds per minute. We'll multiply the one and a half times two to get a three. And then we'll put this two on top of this 40 minus one half t. Now what we need to do actually is ship this guy over to the other side. No y should ever be on the right hand side, separable or linear move the whole thing over by adding it 
leaving us just with the three on the right hand side and we really could work with this but let's actually simplify algebraically this term 2y over 40 minus 1 half t let's simplify that the 1 half could actually end up giving us some trouble so let's deal with that rewrite 40 as 80 over 2 and then we combine this to be 80 minus t over 2 and then the over 2 part can come up and multiply this 2 in the numerator and give us a 4. So we're talking about 80 minus t all over 2, and that's all underneath the 2. And so that 2 comes up and um, when we reciprocate. And that's how we end up with uh, our formula, 4y over 80 minus t. But one more thing, we'd like to isolate the y part so we'll take the, the 4 over 80 minus t and put that in front of the y. And there we have it. This is our differential equation. We write it in this manner so that we can identify the function p that we need to integrate in our first. This is a linear, ordinary differential equation. There's no way to separate the variables in this one. All right, what about our initial condition? We were told that there was pure water in the tank in the beginning. A tank initially holds 40 gallons of pure water is what it said. And so that means when time is zero, Y is zero. Y is how many pounds of salt. So there were no pounds of salt in the beginning. And then we have it. these two boxes here represent our question. That's the setup. Now, if we were asked to set it up, we'd be done. But we have to go further. And so let's take this to the next step. Let's go ahead and solve it. Uh, the first step in solving a linear is to find the integrating factor. In a linear form, we have p of, in this case, p of t, usually it's p of x, but here we have p of t, which is multiplied by y on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have q of t, and just know that it's okay to have a constant there. Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't have to have a t in it. So let's integrate this. What is the integral of 4 over 80 minus t? Well, if we just say natural log, we have to be careful. So let's t do a u substitution. If we let u be the entire denominator, then du is negative dt, because 80 minus t has this as its derivative negative 1. So we have that negative, we have the 4, and then we're talking about 1 over u. Yeah, so that would be natural log of u. And so the result then is that this is negative 4 natural log of 80 minus t. And our integrating factor then would be e to that. But we can't cancel the e and the log. This negative 4 needs to be handled first. And what we need to do is use the property of logs, which allows us to put that up as the exponent on the inside of the log. And then we can cancel. It turns out that the integrating factor then would be uh, 80 minus t to the negative 4, or written with a positive exponent, 1 over 80 minus t to the 4. That is our integrating factor. Okay, this integrating factor is so special um, because it gives us the ability to simplify the problem. After multiplying through by it, this is the special function that when we multiply through the standard form equation by the integrating factor, then our left-hand side becomes a nice simple product rule. Uh, it's it's not necessary to simplify the left-hand side. Uh, it is to the right-hand side. You like to simplify that. Uh, let me go ahead and simplify this, though, because it, it can be done easily. We have an 80 minus t and an 80 minus t to the 4. So we have 80 minus t to the 5. But everything else stays the same. And on the right-hand side, we have a 3 on top of that 80 minus t to the 4. So this is our differential equation. After multiplying through by the integrating factor, we are ready for the third step, which has us renaming this left hand side. Let's go to the next slide and do that. Rewrite the left hand side as the derivative of your integrating factor times y. If you worked it out you'll see product rule with this guy as your first function and this guy as your second function it does work out that we have that. That's desirable because of the next step. In the next step we're asked basically to integrate both sides. When we go to do that, 
using the fundamental theorem of calculus, these operations undo each other and you just get the integrand out. But um, when we do the right hand side's antiderivative, we want to make sure that we get the plus c. It's a very important vital part of the problem. And so how do you integrate 3 times the quantity of 80 minus t to the negative fourth? Let's do a use up. If u is 80 minus t, then du is minus t, t again. And we'll be looking at 3 times the integral, or I guess negative 3 times the integral of u to the negative 4. Because of the 3 that's out here and the negative that's from here. So we get u to the negative 3 over negative 3 by integrating. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the same thing. Hey, look at these two negative 3's here, they cancel out. So simply we get positive 1 over u cubed. Okay, so this will be 1 over 80 minus t cubed. But don't forget the plus c. Alright, great, we're almost done. Uh, what we're going to do, as soon as the c shows up, we want to get rid of it. There's a condition that helps us get rid of it. Let's take a look at that on the next slide. The condition is that there was pure water in the beginning. And that means when t is 0, y is 0, we plug that in, and it gives us the value for c. Uh, the whole left-hand side here cancels out. This is 1 over 80 cubed, so c then would be the opposite of that. That should say cubed, I'm sorry. All right, great. So then we put it back in. And our job is to find the function that gives us salt as a function of time. We want to find out what y is. That means we have to get rid of this term that's in front of it. We'll multiply by it. And then we'll have y all by itself. We could simplify the first term, definitely. But the second term, nothing we can do. We just maybe just put in a numerator here. And so the first term will cancel out three of these guys, leaving you with one left. And the answer to the question is 80 minus t minus the 80 minus t to the fourth all over 80 cubed. You give me a t, I'll be able to tell you how much salt is in the tank at that time t. And that's the solution to the problem.